Well, hello everybody. Welcome to this new edition of Aztec on Air. It's a very special one. As you know, Aztec on Air is the chance that we have to bring in uh, experts from outside of the field to, to inspire us in the work that we do every day. And today we try to combine these two things because we have the chance to welcome today Christine Torkello, who is the new President CEO of Aztec, but that was not the case three days ago. So she is more an expert from outside the field today, but uh, starting at uh, Aztec president. And so we're really thrilled to have you here. Christine, welcome to Aztec. We have had some kind of intense days with you in, in the start here. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're going to certainly talk about that, but maybe you should start by telling something about yourself first. Oh, well, thank you, Walter. And I'm so excited to be here. It's been such a great few days here during my first week at Aztec. Mm -hmm. Really excited to be aboard. You know, I'm um, based in DC now, have been for the last six years, but originally I'm a California girl. I grew up in Southern California, went to UCLA. I'm a proud UCLA Bruin um, and, and moved out here uh, for a, a job at the White House. I've really been enjoying my time in DC. I've been enjoying this transition to Aztec and so hoping to talk with you a little bit more about my background and what I'm hoping for here in Good. my time at Aztec. Good, and that's what we're here for. So Great. Uh, if, if we look at your career, uh, there are three great large periods from my point of view, a big chunk, so to say, and the first start in LA, in the media, and then uh, working for the, uh, the, the <laughs> The X Prize Foundation. The X Prize Foundation. Yeah, I forgot that. Yeah. No, it's good. And, and then to the uh, to the White House. And I, I guess that at each of these steps in your career, you have learned a, new, a few things that you may bring to us. And then yeah. see your what is your experience in the three different phases of your life yeah. uh, that you can uh, help us with here. Sure. And I appreciate that you've uh, constructed the history of me, so that will help me organize my own thoughts. Uh, you know, I did start my career at the Los Angeles Times. At the LA Times, I uh, worked in operations and I worked in professional development. And that means that I'm a bit of a geek for how or organizations get structured and what makes them really effective. It's also made me love facilitation and post-it notes, something that you and I have shared <laughs> together already. And so Indeed. one thing that I'm hoping that that period of my life along with the period that I spent at Idealab where I was starting technology companies, uh, can help me think about how Aztec can function best as an organization. And, and we'll really be looking at our business strategy, our business model to make sure we're serving our members. I think that history and professional development and organizational development and operations uh, will hopefully serve us well here at Aztec. Definitely, I think, and, and, and we're all looking forward to personal growth as, as members yeah. of the staff, but also how that can help our members as exactly. well. Exactly. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that. And then you went to the... The, 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 the X-Prize Foundation. The X-Prize Foundation. Why would I not why would I forget that? Uh, and what is it that you did there that can teach us something here? Right. So if you're not familiar with it, the X-Prize Foundation is a nonprofit in Southern California that runs large incentive prize competitions to try to drive technology breakthroughs. So what that meant in reality is that I was running summer camp for engineers. We were running competitions for super efficient cars, for rapid oil cleanup technology, for lunar landers. And what we saw there was the power of science and technology to address hard challenges that the world is facing also what a small team of individuals can do if they put their mind to it. So I think coming out of that experience at XPRIZE, I feel committed to the power of innovation, of open problem solving. So what we can do in our Aztec community of opening up the questions we're asking ourselves to a broader audience, and also what we can do to share with more youth how science and technology can really be a participatory sport, something that we can all get our hands dirty in, get to work, and help solve problems together. Yeah, and, and it's more actual than ever because the conversations that are going on about artificial intelligence, for example, focus our, 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 our work maybe into that direction, and, and it's, yeah. it's really going to become more and more important yeah. questions that people have if it's good or not, right. you know, and, and so we don't give all the answers, I guess, but certainly we can we can address the topic as such. And, and, and engage the community and, and, in yeah. dialogue yeah. about it, yeah. yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how we, artificial intelligence or other technologies can actually help solve community problems. Yes, right? 
Yes, yeah. indeed. And that was the type of question that we would take on in the White House role that I had. You know, I worked for President Obama's science advisor, his U.S. chief technology officer. We worked to develop science and technology policy on a wide range of issues. The work that was sometimes most interesting was these questions of emerging technology, what they mean for society, exactly. and how do we make sure that the benefits and capabilities and, and you know, potential profits offered by those technologies mm -hmm. are shared with all, not just exactly. with a lucky yeah. few. Yeah. Um, and that really came down to questions of education and access to learning opportunities um, and something that I think we're going to be talking about with our members a lot. Yeah, I imagine so. So that is a segue into your, your transition to the White House. So yeah. you give us a little bit about that, but maybe uh, what, what's your uh, essential role that you had there? Yeah, so I would say two things. One, from a policy point of view, I worked most on open innovation and grand challenges. Uh, the grand challenges role was about setting moonshot goals so that cross-sector partnerships could set course for those ambitious goals and try to solve big problems. That was like President Obama's brain initiative when we uh, have a bipartisan support, $3 billion in funding to try to understand more of what's going on up here and solve diseases of the brain. Uh, we also were looking at how to use tools like crowdsourcing, citizen science, and incentive prizes those open approaches that many Aztec members are also already deploying and trying to see how more people around the country could get involved in doing that type of work, citizen sol science being citizen solvers. I love that work. Uh, I moved on from that to become the chief of staff to the President Science Advisor. That meant uh, wrangling our whole team at OSTP and making sure the president was getting the best science advice through our science staff. So how does that then relate, do you think, to, to what, what Aztec does? Right. So two ways. One, um, the Office of Science and Technology Policy, where I was, looked uh, at STEM education, at science, technology, engineering, and math education. That includes informal science education that Aztec members are daily involved doing good work towards. Um, so that's one direct way. Um, a broader way is that when we're looking across all of those emerging technology fields and breakthroughs in science, we're thinking about how to engage um, the general public in understanding what that means for their community. Um, I see a huge role for science centers to play in that local dialogue about the impact of emerging mm -hmm. technologies. So that's the other relevant piece, is that as the world changes rapidly, new information technologies, uh, what can we be doing through science centers to build that community dialogue about the future? So we have the impression sometimes that we are in a little bit in a bubble uh, <laughs> and that no one knows about us outside of the organization. So, but is there a vision that as, when you were at the White House, yeah. did, did you have a vision about informal science education? I guess you did about science centers and Aztec. Is the, does that come up in the conversation? Yeah, it's often hard when um, you work in a given field to figure out how do I fit in the bigger picture? How do I fit in the national picture? How do I fit in the global picture? When you're at the White House, you're looking at nationwide and sometimes global policy goals. You know, how do we get more students prepared to solve the problems of the future? How do we get more students uh, having hands-on experience in making things? And so you'll see broad policy initiatives launched, like, for example, uh, the Maker Education Initiative, trying to get more maker spaces across the country. The way that a, a policy person at a White House would view science centers is what could science centers be offering, either through partnerships or on a one-on-one -on -one basis, to advance those policy goals in their community. So I think a challenge for the science center community is to read the tea leaves about what people in an administration might be seeking in terms mm -hmm. of policy yeah. outputs yeah. and make the case for why this field is best positioned yeah. to bring those outcomes yeah. forward. Often the most powerful approaches come through process sector partnership. Not a science center alone, but a science yeah. center paired with its local education institution or local community organizations. Those make powerful labs, powerful pilots for policies that could potentially be expanded nationwide. That's how we would think about it. How, how do we make sure that, that when we do pro projects to kids like that, that we do not just address the top ones who knows things already and that we are going to large enough to make sure that all, all kids are, have the chance to, to 
come in contact with these new technologies and, and solve the problems of their communities. Yeah, really important and very hard question that we wrestle with on a daily basis at the White House and that I know our members are wrestling with as well. I'd say a couple of things. I'd say, one, um, we need to get better as a field about our practice related to building welcoming and inclusive environments. Mm -hmm. This topic came up on an Ask Me Anything we just did on the yeah. Aztec Forum, and we were talking a bit about what it takes, the skills it takes for a professional in this field to learn about emerging research about inclusive environments, to be able to welcome everybody in their community into their institutions. One way we do that here at Aztec is by connecting peers to each other, so that science centers that are doing good work can share those practices with others and vice versa. It's really the community learning from the community and connections to the research community yeah. as well. So you had the chance to meet with us a little bit already before yeah. when coming to the Aztec Conference in San Jose. So uh, what was your first impression when you came there and you met with the professionals from the science center? Right, I, I'm so glad to be at the Aztec Conference in San Jose. Um, and thanks, of course, to the tech for hosting us there. Um, the Aztec Conference was a fire hose for me. I met um, hundreds, if not thousands of people over a few days. Um, and one of the most interesting interactions was the CEO forum where yeah. CEOs of various institutions were talking with each other about the future of the field. Uh, wrestling with a lot of the relevance questions that you and I have been talking about today and feeling committed to a collaborative approach for how we move forward. So that was an interesting discussion. Another thing that struck me was that collaborative word, how um, open to uh, partnership, to collaboration, and to knowledge sharing individuals and uh, institutions are in this field. That's rare and it's a wonderful thing and it's one of the reasons I'm excited about Aztec because we can really facilitate that dialogue among our members. Yeah, it, it's interesting to see that actually when, at the moment that you come on board, we have this trend in the field to think more about itself yes. and, and find solutions for, for big challenges that are, that are ahead. So it's a good time. Oh, I'm excited here, about right? it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are too, we are too because we think that. that, that you yeah. with, with the background that we were looking for to, to address that. Thank you. Thank you. So, and then from there we, we went to Tokyo, right? We did. And, so, yeah, and, and, and somehow the same trend was there. Yes. But, but also different things. What was your take on the World Summit? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm lucky for the timing that I was able to join you at the Science Center World Summit and so grateful to our hosts in Tokyo for the amazing event they pulled together. You know, we um, at the Science Center World Summit heard similar themes come up, you know, heard these questions about how do emerging technologies impact the work we do in informal science education? What's the role of big data and data science and how we do this? And also, how do we look at the role of international networks? I was so excited to meet my counterparts at international networks from around the world. How do we forge that dialogue year over year and also leverage what each other's networks and members are doing? So I think we at Aztec are very excited to continue with partnering with others on that work um, and appreciate all the dialogue that was on stage there in Tokyo. And I think there are differences, but as you say, we have seen big similar trends yeah. uh, appearing in the conversations there in Tokyo and in San Jose. So it's a it's a good time for both on local yes. and on international level. Right, big right. questions being wrestled yeah. with all around so, the world in this field. So when you have been through this, yeah. the experience that you have from your professional career and how they looked at our field and then mm -hmm. mating with us in these different occasions, what does that tell us, that tell you? about what the field should go to, towards. Right, well, first thing I'll say is, I don't know it all yet, right? So I think- uh, I one don't know it either, so I'm good. asking you. We're in the same <laughs> camp. And so one thing we're gonna be doing this year is asking a lot of questions and doing a lot of listening to our members. Uh, we wanna make sure we know uh, what challenges and opportunities they're seeing within their institutions. We'll be doing regional dialogues, um, you know, not just in the U.S., but also with our international members. Uh, we're going to be uh, engaging experts from outside of the field to get their good ideas for us and having shared dialogue. Um, but, you know, I have some gut feelings about where we might want to go. Uh, one is I think Aztec needs to double down on, on its diversity and inclusion work. I think we can continue building out professional development opportunities with our members on that topic. But we ourselves can do better as well, and that will help all of us broaden participation in STEM. Uh, the second is that I have a feeling we at Aztec can be um, helping do more of this future looking ahead that we've been talking about here today to be sourcing good ideas for the field. 
Um, and again, on our recent Ask Me Anything, um, there was a conversation about um, how we as a field and in formal science learning generally prepare for the capabilities offered by information technology, data science, and as you mentioned, artificial intelligence, the impacts that has on the science of learning. I'm very curious about what AvTech can do to better support its members during that time of rapid technological change. So that would be another piece. And the third is around delivering um, increased value to our members um, so that not just the executive levels of their organizations, but emerging professionals in the field are supported by Aztec as um, they pursue their own ideas for um, how to experiment with new approaches in informal science learning and enable information sharing across those professionals. So, Do you see citizen science as part of that? Well, I'm a bit of a geek for citizen science. Um, and um, one of the things I'm most looking forward to is visiting with our members who are running interesting citizen science programs because um, I believe in the power of the crowd. Um, and I think that is not just a lightweight thing. It is not just a fun thing for yeah. individuals to do. It actually has meaningful research impacts mm -hmm. and allows youth in particular an experience with hands-on learning that research shows is key to making STEM skills stick. So you hit on a hot topic for me and one that I'm very excited about talking good. with our members more about. That's good. I, I think there's a big trend in the field and more and more people are doing it and for good reasons. So I yeah. think we, we going to make some progress on that as well. Yeah. So having said that, what would Aztec then look like in 10 years from now? Oh, well, you know, we're still learning, but uh, I see several things. One is um, an expanded membership around the world, um, really as our field um, grows and strengthens, uh, making sure that, that we are servicing that expanded field. Um, the, the second is continued robust professional development you know, really world-class thinking within our institution, but also harnessing the thinking from other fields and within our own. So a very strong professional development field. Um, the other is a, a staff, a board, and a membership, and a, a community that we service that looks like the world, right? That looks like the diverse uh, communities that we serve. Um, so again, coming back to that diversity piece. Um, and I think at the heart of it is the heart of the Aztec staff I've seen here in the last few days, this commitment to science education, a joy of learning in science and technology, and a, a commitment to spreading that, um, it, that dialogue and that love for science. And learning. making sure that it not only serves the our members, but the communities. The communities as well. Yeah. Right. Really, really landing um, that ability to broaden participation in STEM yeah. and increase science literacy. So that's ambitious, but I can, we can do it. We can do it. I feel confident. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you, you just mentioned a couple of times that we had this uh, ask me anything. That said, if there is one more uh, feeling that you have about that, what questions that you were most challenging, maybe or the most interesting to you? Yeah, I'm hoping that more of our members um, can engage with me in future ask me anything like that because we uh, got into some big questions mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. Um, people weren't asking me, you know, what, what my dog's names are. They were asking me about the future of the field. Um, I was particularly excited to see questions about um, what skills emerging professionals need in this field because that speaks to yeah. this robust future. Um, and uh, really figuring out uh, what they need to succeed. And that's something we can all support our emerging professionals around. Um, the other thing is we got into some of this around uh, public policy and advocacy, and we haven't talked about that much today, but obviously given my background in policy, I believe Aztec has a role to play in helping its members prepare to advocate for science, science investment, science education. And I don't just mean advocating with our elected officials, but also organizing and advocating within our own communities so that our communities see the value of science and tech in their backyards. Maybe a challenging question I yeah. to end up. Is yesterday Google, all the reason I thought about Google, finding out about research that they did with young people, that maybe STEM and just STEM alone is not enough. Mm. And that you really need to include humanities and, and, and skills and soft skills to prepare you, yeah. not only become an engineer, but have the soft skills 
to be successful in society. Yes. So is that something that our science center should listen to? I think many of our science centers are already engaging the arts and the humanities in the way that they communicate science, in the way that they uh, talk about problem solving. Um, and I think we have many uh, promising examples to point to. I mentioned my work towards grand challenges and related partnerships. Many of those moonshot goals are being pursued by teams of scientists, researchers, artists, humanitarian, humanitarians, and storytellers. Um, you need to have all of that at the table, good designers. Um, and I think that many of our members are already communicating in that way. Um, the A in STEAM, uh, if we're not just saying STEM. Um, but that said, there is a rigor in how we communicate science and technology in a fact-based way, that fact-based ways that needs to get maintained while we partner. Great. So. Any last uh, yes. thoughts that you want to share with us? The membership? most important last thought. I talked a little bit about this listening process we're going to engage in. The goal of that is to move Aztec forward together with our members so that we emerge with a strategic plan for this organization that serves the needs of our members. And that takes into account all these trends we've been talking to uh, about today. And so I want to invite all of you um, to participate in that process, whether it's through the regional dialogues that we'll be organizing or through the online dialogues that we will be pulling together through forums like the Ask Me Anything. Um, and uh, I really look forward to hearing from you and to learning from you and to meeting more of you as we move forward. Um, you are at the core of the work that Aztec does and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Walter, really thank you. I'm looking forward to working with Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs>